Hello, for today's video lecture we're going to be talking the, about the equations of motion uh, in rectangular coordinate systems. So, uh, Newton's second law and the force mass acceleration method, we talked about this a little bit in one dimension, uh, but the force mass and acceleration method in kinetics builds directly on Newton's second law which states that the sum of forces uh, is going to be equal to the mass uh, times acceleration for any given body. Um, so, uh, if we add the known and unknown values into this equation, uh, it becomes the e equation of motion and we're going to solve that uh, for the unknown values in the equation. So it's important to remember that this uh, force and acceleration are vectors. Uh, they have magnitude and direction. So in many cases, and in this case, we're going to be breaking those down into uh, component parts, and particularly in the uh, Rectangular coordinate systems can be the x and the y directions. Uh, if we go full 3D, it'd be the x, y, and z directions. Uh, for and we have, to have an equation of motion in each component direction. Uh, so by solving the equations, uh, we can find the forces given the accelerations, or find the accelerations given the forces. All right. So in two dimensions. Um, we're going to split it into uh, component forms. So uh, in the rectangular coordinate system, sum of forces in the x is going to be equal to the mass uh, times acceleration in the x. Uh, so the force is acting on the body and the acceleration of that body. Uh, and same thing for the y direction. So the sum of forces in the y direction is going to be equal to the mass of the body times the acceleration in the y direction. Uh, so when we use rectangular coordinate systems such as x and y, uh, it is important to remember that we usually use this when the positions, velocities, and accelerations are independent in these two directions. Uh, so this doesn't mean that the, we only have forces and accelerations entirely in those directions. Uh, however, it does mean that the forces and the accelerations that are exerted on the body are going to be uh, largely independent of the position. Uh, so we have a, if we have a consistent force and a consistent acceleration in a direction, that might uh, that's going to be uh, the case. So ballistic motion is an example uh, where the gravity force, regardless of position, is going to be kind of the same, it's going to have the same direction, same magnitude, uh, etc. All right, so uh, also don't forget your kinematics. So it's important to remember uh, those kinematics, and we talked about those uh, back in Chapter 7. Um, so you're not always going to be given uh, acceleration terms. Uh, you might also not be asked for acceleration terms. So you need to use your kinematics uh, to uh, relate positions, velocities, and accelerations. Uh, and then you're going to use your kinetics uh, to relate the forces to those accelerations. Um, so don't be afraid uh, if solving for A uh, in your kinematics equations uh, or your kinetics equations, you kind of put these things together. So we've got uh, acceleration in our kinematics equations, accelerations in our kinetics equations, uh, and we can substitute, combine, put those equations together um, and just as with kinematics, uh, we have these separate directions. We have x and y, but time is the variable that's going to tie those two equations of motion together. Uh, and the time comes from the kinematics equations uh, in all of this. So solving a kinetics problem, again, the process, uh, talking about this, uh, is similar to what we do in statics. We've got three big steps. The first thing you always want to do is you want to set up a free body diagram of your object. Uh, so you're going to draw in the body that's separated from its surroundings. This is the free part. Uh, you're going to draw in all the known and unknown forces uh, on the body. Uh, I use red for this. You're going to draw in the key dimensions and angles. I use blue for this uh, personally. And you're going to draw in the acceleration vector. Uh, or in this case, you can even uh, break the acceleration down to acceleration in the x and acceleration in the y. Uh, kind of draw, the, draw those in if they're in some known direction in particular. Uh, and I use a like, blue dashed vector for this one. All right, so after you have your free body diagram, um, you also want to, sorry, I should mention, you should always put your uh, coordinate directions, so put the x and y directions in your free body diagram as well. Uh, next, you're going to use the free body diagram to write out your equations of motion. Uh, this is F equal, F, sum of forces in the X is equal to mass times acceleration in the X. Sum of forces in the Y is equal to mass times acceleration in the Y. Uh, so take all those forces, break them down into components. Take all the accelerations, break those down into components. Uh, and if you need to, uh, you can supplement your kinetics equations with the kinematics equations uh, relating position, velocity, and acceleration again. 
All right, so after you have all your equations, the last part is the math. You just need to use algebra, uh, and you're going to solve the equations for any unknowns that you have uh, in those equations of motion. All right, so with that, that's all I have for today's video lecture. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.